Since the pandemic, home prices have skyrocketed on average around 35%, and in some markets, over 50%. But within the last six months, the housing market have cooled off in a big way. According to Redfin, this is the sharpest turn we have seen since 2008. And why is this happening? Well, because mortgage rates are going up. They are skyrocketing and they have more than doubled within the last six months. And that's because the Federal Reserve has been raising rates to try to curb demand. So what got us here and should we be worried? If you're looking for a home right now or thinking about selling your home, well, make sure you watch this video. So how did we get here exactly? Let's go back to 2008 when the entire US market entered its last recession due to the collapse of subprime loans. Nine years prior, the banks wanted to, to quote, make home loans more accessible to those who had lower credit and savings, which made the banks start increasing the number of subprime mortgages they would give out. It was really a way for banks to make more money. Think about it, the more loans that they give out, the more interest payments they receive. And during a hot uptrend, it seemed like everyone was making money and no one was going to get hurt. So during this period, banks gave out a lot of interest only mortgages or adjustable rate mortgages. So the borrower would make much lower payments than say versus a fixed rate mortgage. So from 1999 to 2005, Mortgages were seen as virtually risk-free. What could go wrong, right? Despite giving out more and more subprime loans during the time, banks got even greedier and started buying up things like mortgage-backed securities, which are pools of mortgages together. Then, of course, in 2007, when the market started coming down, banks who took too much exposure with subprime mortgages and mortgage-backed securities and credit default swaps went under. First... It was Bear Stearns, then it was Lehman Brothers. Soon, every bank, every bank in the US was in trouble and the US government had to step in and take control. And guess what? The Fed bailed out all the banks who were deemed too big to fail. Now, after the whole collapse, there were more rules and regulations put into place, but one of the things that reset that no one really paid attention to was the Fed fund rate and that fed fund rate at that time dropped to zero and going back 50 plus years the fed fund rate which is the rate to borrow money from the federal reserve has never been that low and it stayed at zero pretty much all the way until the beginning of 2022 now the reason why the fed fund rate is important is because mortgages and the percentage of interest is affected by two things the prime rate and also the 10-year treasury note. The prime rate is what banks charge their most creditworthy customers, and generally speaking, it's about 3% higher than the Fed fund rate. So as you can imagine, with the Fed fund rate at 0%, essentially, mortgage rates drop tremendously to under 5% and pretty much hovered there for the last 14 years, anywhere from 3 to 5%. And briefly, in 2021 and 2022, we saw mortgage rates for the 30-year mortgage drop below 3%. Some people even have it locked in at 2.25, 2.5%. Now, there was a period between 2015 and 2019 where the Fed came to their senses and said, well, maybe, maybe it's not so good to leave the Fed fund rate so low. And maybe we need to reduce our balance sheet a little bit. So from 2015 to 2019, that's exactly what the Fed did. They started reducing their balance sheet a little bit and also start raising their rates. But unfortunately, we know that the pandemic hit. So starting from 2020, all that stopped. The Fed basically stopped everything they were doing. And that is why the Fed fund rate dropped to zero again. And they started buying even more bonds. Unfortunately, that's not all because there were mandatory shutdowns and quarantine and curfew governments around the world including the u.s decided that they need to prop up the, the economy by printing or minting trillions upon trillions upon trillions of dollars the trillions were distributed in the form of cash tax breaks even loans to businesses that were forgiven so as you can see with the fed fund rate being at zero and with trillions being distributed out well that got us to where we are today with extremely high inflation. 
the plan worked a bit too well in terms of propping up the economy. Also, with supply being limited due to closures of factories, plants, and ships worldwide, the buying demand stayed high, supply went down, and that's why we have a huge surge in price with everything. This includes home. Cost to build homes skyrocketed due to the increase of price of concrete, lumber, and wages. Existing homes start to skyrocket because of those reasons and due to lack of supply and overall general demand. And that is why within the last two years, we saw average home prices go up about 35%. And in the hotter markets, like California, over 50%. But because of what the Federal Reserve has been doing for the last nine months, the Fed fund rate is now back to 3%, not at 0%, and could be as high as 4.5% by the end of the year. Those low mortgage rates are now gone, which is why we're seeing one of the greatest cooling periods of the housing market since 2008. Unfortunately, people that have gotten used to the low rates that we have for the last 14 years is going to face a harsh reality because a 30-year mortgage is now back above 6% and could be heading to 10% in the near future. Those who took out a 10 or 15-year arm will now face the reality of their mortgages essentially doubling when they refinance. Young adults looking to buy their first home will now have second thoughts and investment properties will probably decrease in demand. So what does this mean exactly? Are we gonna have another housing bubble like we did 14 years ago when everything collapsed? Unlikely, and here's why. First, the people that bought their homes within the last 14 years, many have locked in their low, low rates. Some are sub 3%, and that means they are in no rush of selling. The higher interest rates actually, in fact, force people to stay in their homes. Second is the economy is still strong despite the market meltdown and global inflation. Unlike 2008, unemployment is still hovering near a 50-year low. The labor force is still strong in the U.S. Wages are still higher because many businesses still cannot fulfill their positions. Because of these two reasons, I don't believe we will see another collapse but I do expect the housing market overall to cool off within the next few years. Supply will still be constrained. And to paraphrase Fed Chair Jerome Powell, recently he said that he expects the housing market to cool off, and that's a good thing because in a market where offers are given for above market value even before a home is seen is unsustainable, and I agree. Within the last two years, anyone that's been shopping for a home like I have knows how fast homes were selling and how high people were bidding for these homes. Homes were going up and selling at an unsustainable rate. So now we're getting that cool off period. So if you are in the market looking to purchase a new home, you may want to hold off for the next couple of years as things cool off. But if you do need a home right now, keep in mind that you can't always buy and get a mortgage and refinance at a lower rate later on. So thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this. What are your thoughts on the overall economy, on the housing market? Are you looking for a home? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Smash up the like, subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned for future videos like this.